Hey, how's it awesome, guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Google Speech to Text API in Python. With Google Speech to Text API, you can convert speech to text, transcribe videos, and even recognize customer keywords. Now let's look at the agenda. For this lesson, I'm going to cover how to create a Python virtual environment first that is dedicated to this project. Then we activate the environment and install the Google Speech to Text API Python package. Then I'll show you how to set up a Google Cloud project. Then we enable the Speech to Text API, create a Google service account. Then I'll show you two examples on how to transcribe short and long videos. Now let's dive into the tutorial. Now, before we do anything, I want to cover the pricing real quick. Now, in terms of the pricing, first 60 minutes is going to be free every month. And after the 60 minutes, it's going to be 0 0.006 cents per 15 seconds. And that's all you need to know when it comes to Google Speech to Text API pricing. Now, let's create the Python virtual environment. Right, so here in this uh, Python VMV folder or directory, these are all my uh, Python virtual environments. You can create as many Python virtual environments you want based on the number of projects. Now I'm going to launch my terminal, and I'll be using Bash uh, as my default terminal. And to create a Python virtual environment, I'm going to type Python M stands for module, followed by the module that we're going to use to create the virtual environment. And it's going to be VMV, followed by the virtual environment name. For the environment, I'm going to name the environment speech to text demo. Enter. And once the virtual environment is created, I'm going to set it into the directory. And it's going to be CD speech to text demo. All right, so here let me go into my project folder. For demonstration purpose, I have this 15 seconds audio. Now, if I play the audio, I don't know if you can uh, hear the audio since I don't have the system voice recording turned on. All right, so if we look at uh, the audio length, it's a 15 seconds audio, and which we're going to uh, transcribe this file uh, later on when we write the Python program. All right, so let me close the file. Now, to use the Python virtual environment, I need to activate the environment first. And to do that, we need to run the activate uh, file in the scripts directory. All right, so here I'm going to type source. And because I'm using bash, I need to type the uh, source command. But if I'm using PowerShell or just a regular command, you can simply uh, type the file path directly. All right, so to run the uh, activate file in bash, I'm going to type source followed by the folder path followed by the uh, file name. Enter. Then we can install the uh, speech to text API Python package. And to install the package, I'm going to type pip install google dash cloud dash speech. Enter. And once the Python packages are installed, we can go ahead and uh, move on to the next step, which is to create a Google Cloud project. All right, so open your browser and navigate to console.cloud.google.com. All right, so I'm going to just type the URL address in the uh, address bar and enter. And you should see a page that is similar to mine. If you don't have an account, simply sign up for an account and it's free. Some of the Google Cloud services may not be available until you enable building on your account to sign for I. So before we can use any Google API service, we need to create a project first. So here from the dropdown, I'm going to click on new project. And I'll name the project Google Speech Demo and create. And you can think of project as an app. So basically with a Google project, we are going to add uh, different services that this project will be able to use. All right, so once we create a project, we need to select the project as the active project. So I'm going to select Google Speech Demo. Now we're going to enable the Speech to Text API by clicking on this navigation menu, APIs and Services, then click on Library. 
Now in the search bar, I'm going to search for speech to text. Enter. Now you should see three options. We want to click on Cloud Speech to Text API. And here we want to enable the API by clicking on Enable. And here you should see the uh, building require window pop up. And that's because uh, this is one of the APIs that is required billing enable. So I'm going to click on enable billing. Now choose my billing account. Set account. Now if you see the loading window is now responding. All right, so I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the navigation menu and I'll go to billing directly. And make sure that you select the uh, current project. Then I'm going to click on link a billing account. All right, so let me try again. So let's like already reach my project limit, uh, how many projects I can enable the uh, billing. All right, so let me close this and I'm going to choose a different project. Assuming that I'm still using the Google Speech demo project. All right, so I'll choose a different project. Now going to APIs and services library, speech to text API. And make sure that you enable the cloud speech to text API. Now I want to create a Google service account by clicking on navigation menu, APIs and services, then click on credentials. So a service account is a special type of Google account that belongs to your application or a virtual machine. The service account is used to authenticate your application when making API requests to Google Cloud Platform services. And to create a service account, we want to click on Create Credentials, then choose Service Account. Now here we need to give this account a name. I'm going to name the account. Let's do a Speech Demo. Then click on Create and Continue. Now we need to assign a role to this account to limiting uh, what type of permission that this account has. And for demonstration purpose, I'm going to choose owner. Now at this point, we'll finish creating the account. So I'm going to click on done. Now to authenticate the application, we need to download the service account client file. All right, so under the service accounts, I'm going to click on speech demo, which is the account that I just created. And we can figure out the account name by looking at the uh, name column. All right, so click on the account. On the top, I want to click on keys. And here, click on add key. Then click on create new key. Now here I want to save the uh, file as a JSON file. So make sure that you choose JSON as the key type. Then click on create. All right, so I'm going to uh, save the JSON file to my project directory. I'm going to paste the folder path, enter. And for the file name, I'm going to name the file. SA stands for service account, underscore speech, demo. All right, so if I go back to my uh, project folder, and I say I saved the, uh, the JSON file in the wrong location. Let me move the file to my uh, project directory. Now at this point, we can go ahead and uh, write the Python programs or the Python scripts. All right, so I'm going to create two files, demo1.py and demo2.py. Then I'll launch my code editor and I'll be using VS Code for this exercise. All right, so I'm going to open the demo1.py file. Now the first thing I want to do here is I want to import the libraries. All right, so here I'm importing the IO library to convert the audio file into uh, binary strings. And from the google.org2, I'm going to import the service account library. Then from google.cloud, I'm going to import the speech module. All right, so here I'm going to construct the uh, speech client object to connect to the uh, speech endpoint. So here I'm going to grab the file path of the client uh, JSON file. And I'll replace the uh, file name to the client file variable. 
then using the service account dot credentials dot from service account file function, we can pass the client file path to create the credentials object. And when we create the speech client object, we can authenticate the connection or the application by providing the credentials object to the credentials parameter. And I'll name the speech client object as client. Now I want to upload the audio file. And I can do that by using the IO module. So here I'm creating a variable to store the uh, file path to the audio file. Then I'm going to insert the with statement to open the audio file using the io.open function. I'm going to read as binary. And I'll name uh, the output as f, stands for uh, file. Then we can load the content by using the f.read method. And I'll name the output as content. Then we need to convert the content object to a format that Google speech to text API will be able to recognize. In this case, we need to use the speech that recognition audio class and we'll pass the content object to the content parameter. And I'll name the output as audio. So one thing is very important to know that when you are transcribing an audio file that is longer than one minute or more than 60 seconds, in that case, you need to upload the file to a Google Cloud storage and we'll load the audio file from a Google Cloud Drive directly. And since my audio file is only 15 seconds long, so I can uh, directly transcribe from my local drive. So we know there are different uh, audio files, MP3, WAV, MP4, and etc. And based on the audio file that you're using, in this case, I'm using a WAV file. So I need to manually configure the audio file property. The first thing I'm going to configure is the uh, encoding type. If I'm using a different uh, audio file type, in that case, we can uh, go to the audio encoding uh, reference, which I'll link the link in the description below. So here's a list of supported uh, encoding type, which you can go to on your own. And for the sample rate, I'm going to set that to 44,100 since I'm using a WAV file. And launch code is optional. Now, once we have the configuration setting, and the audio file data, we can make the uh, request code to transcribe the audio file. So here I'm going to reference the client object. Then I'll use the recognize method, and I'll provide the configuration setting and the audio file's content. Now if I run line 10 all the way to uh, line 21. Oh, actually I forgot to uh, create a client object. Actually, let's do that. So I'm going to run this code block right here to create the response object. All right, so here I'm uh, saying that my client is not created. All right, so let's take a look. And here I'm getting a file not found here. And that's because I forgot to include uh, the extension. Let me try again. So I'm going to run this uh, entire code block. All right, so it's like the transcription is finished. Now, if I print the response object, oh, I have a typo. All and it's going to be the output that is going to uh, return from the response object. So here we have the results key, and which contains uh, all information that relate to uh, this API call. So from alternatives, followed by transcript. And here's the transcription from the audio file. So from the audio file, the text returned as Google Cloud speech to text API is a service provided by Google Cloud that allows developers to convert audio to text using a machine learning technology. And this one is incorrect. Uh, he can transcribe your time or pre-recorded in over 120 languages. And from this transcription, we have a confidence value of almost 90%. And the result in time is when the audio ends. And for this API code, I will spend 15 seconds of usage. Now, if I want to retrieve the uh, transcript, from the response option, we need to reference the result attribute that alternatives. And this should be results. All right, so what's going on here? Oh, I see. So one print response that results, and it's going to return as a list because 
uh, there can be multiple transcriptions involved. In that case, we need to reference the elements index, and it's going to be zero, the first element. Now, if I print response that results the alternatives, and it's going to return a list of uh, transcriptions. But here we can simply reference the transcript attribute to send the text directly. And this should be transcripts. Right, so let's see. Uh, I should distribute alternatives. So we can bypass the uh, results attribute. All right, so here let's do this. I'm going to uh, insert loop. So for result in response, that results. Then I want to print the result, the alternatives. I'm going to reference the uh, first element, which is going to be the uh, transcription, that transcript. Now, if I run this loop, it's going to return the transcript text. Now, with Google Speech to Text API, there are actually different models that we can use to ensure that our transcription comes a little bit more accurate. All right, so here let me paste the link, and which I'll also link this uh, link in the description below. All right, so if I scroll down to transcription models, and here's a list of models that we can use based on the environment or uh, the uh, use case that your audio file is uh, based on. And for this transcription, I want to use the video model, and which is best suited for audio from video clips or other sources, such as podcasts that have multiple speakers. Now going back to the script, I want to go back to the recognition config uh, class. And here I want to add a new parameter called model. And I'll insert the model ID that I want to use. In this case, I want to use the video model to uh, enhance the transcription accuracy. Now I'm going to run this code block. Now, if we look at the transcription this time, so this time we have Google Cloud Speech to Text API. It's a service provided by Google Cloud that allows developers to convert audio to text using machine learning technology. It can transcribe real time or pre recorded audio in over 120 languages. So as you can see that by specifying a model based on your use case, we can actually increase the uh, transcription accuracy just like that. Now let's assume that your audio file is longer than 60 seconds. In that case, here let me uh, open the demo2.py file. So here I'm going to grab this code block. I'm not going to uh, run the operation. I'll simply show you the script that I used to transcribe audios from a Google Cloud storage. So here let me close my terminal. We want to transcribe an audio file that is longer than 60 seconds. We'll pass the Google Cloud Storage object UI first, and it's going to be the uh, syntax GCS followed by the URI link. The recognition config object is still the same, except that when we upload the audio file, we need to uh, use the URI parameter, and we'll pass the object as URI. Then from the speech client option, we need to uh, run the long running recognized method. And we'll pass the config object and the audio file. So basically, uh, this long running recognized method is going to perform the uh, transcription operation from the file from the Google Cloud Storage. And once the transcription operation is finished, then we can follow the uh, same steps. We can print the transcript using the same loop. But to retrieve the uh, result, we need to use the operation that result method. And here we can set the timeout duration. I like to set the default to uh, 90 seconds. If a file is longer than five minutes, then I'll change the timeout duration to maybe 120 seconds or 200 seconds. It really depends. So this is going to be something I'm going to share in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.